Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but for those of you that have not figured this out yet, size matters. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. Early in my YouTube career, I created a video talking about how horsepower numbers on a treadmill motor don't mean much. And let me tell you what, I have had so many people tell me that I am wrong. In that video, I use a small motor similar to this and this exact big motor. And I talk about how both of them are rated at two and a half horsepower. That says 2.5 horsepower, but that says 2.5 horsepower. Now this one's actually rated a little higher than that at 2.65, but for the purpose of this video, it's basically the same motor as what I had before. In that video, I teach you how to calculate the torque of your motor. And I talk about how even though the horsepower is the same, that this is a far inferior motor compared to this big boy right here. Now, the two biggest things that I've had is people saying, oh, but the two and a half horsepower that he talked about is not continuous. Really, that motor is only 1.75 continuous, and so he's trying to trick us. The continuous versus max horsepower illustrates how more RPM increases horsepower. And at the higher RPM that this is capable of, you can't run it that way long term because it's going to overheat on you. For the purpose of that specific video, continuous versus max horsepower really didn't matter. Because here's the thing. Horsepower is a function of RPM. If you are putting a treadmill motor on something, you are likely doing it because you want variable speed. Because with a treadmill motor, a DC motor, if you vary the voltage, you vary the speed. At that point, horsepower numbers don't mean much at all because horsepower is based on max RPM. And if you're running it at a third RPM or a tenth RPM, you're not going to be anywhere near max horsepower. That is why I created that video. And that is why doing the calculations for torque are so important. The second argument, again, where people are telling me that I'm wrong, is they say that if this motor and this motor have the same horsepower, and you gear them so that the final output is the same RPM, you're going to have the same torque. And so gearing is everything, and at that point, horsepower wins. And strictly speaking, they are correct. If this has twice the RPMs for the same horsepower as this, and I gear this at 2 to 1, then everything becomes equal, and as I slow this down, the torque will be the same at any given RPM as it is here. But let's unpack that a little bit. If gearing this makes this the same as this, why would any manufacturer ever do this? I mean, look how much bigger that is. Look how much more raw materials have to go in that. There's got to be two or three times the copper, and we know copper's not inexpensive, inside compared to this little guy here. If gearing is all it takes to make these two things equal, why on earth would we do this right here? It takes up more space, it doesn't turn as fast, it takes more raw materials, it doesn't make sense. On a DC motor, roughly speaking, torque is determined by the size of your fixed magnet. The magnet inside this is way bigger than the magnet inside of this. So for one rotation, there is going to be a ton more torque on this motor compared to this motor. To compensate for the lack of torque, they wind these smaller motors to go to much higher RPMs. So if we put 50 volts into this and we put 50 volts into this, this is going to be turning a lot faster than this. And that's how we make it the same. But if this is turning twice as fast, 
basic logic dictates that it's only going to last half as long. The other thing, and this is critical, the faster a motor is turning, the more heat it's going to produce. That means that it's less efficient because we're taking the electricity that's supposed to be driving these motors and converting it into heat. Now, don't get me wrong. There's always going to be some heat. Heat is a residual byproduct of any electric motor, DC or AC. But if we have so much more heat coming off of this, that means we are using more electricity to do the same work. It's very interesting to me that these big heavy duty motors never come with blue wires. Now, one might immediately think the blue wires, they're a safety feature. That is a thermal circuit breaker and it's designed to cut things off if it gets too hot. So the maker of this motor must have just been cheap and decided not to put one in. You're looking at it backwards. This has a thermal circuit breaker in it because it is prone to overheating. This does not have a thermal circuit breaker in it because it is less likely to overheat. So it's not that this is an added feature on this smaller motor. It's that it's not needed on the bigger motor because this motor is correctly sized, it's turning at a reasonable RPM, and it is a far superior option. Now in that first video, I said torque is king. You have to calculate the torque. That's the best way to compare your AC motor to your DC motor. And that is still all completely accurate and correct. But I've gotten multiple people ask questions. They say, what if my motor does not have max RPM? And some of them don't. They'll give you a voltage and they will give you a horsepower, but they will not give you max RPM. So you cannot calculate back to torque. Well, as I said at the beginning, size matters. The bigger the motor is, the more torque that it has. So I'm going to tell you right now, there are basically two classes of motors that I have found in treadmills, and I've parted out somewhere near 20 of them. You have these smaller motors that are three to three and a half inches in diameter, and you have these bigger motors that are four to five inches in diameter. If you're wanting to put your treadmill motor on a lathe or a mill, something that is going to be running for a long period of time, you have to go with a big motor like this. You will be so disappointed if you go with this, even though it's 2.65 horsepower, more horsepower than what this has. You cannot go by those numbers. You have to do the calculation. You have to figure out the torque. And if you can't figure out the torque, you need to measure the size of the motor. I thank those people that have made those comments to tell me that I'm wrong on the information that I provided. And as I said before, strictly speaking, they have valid points. But for the purpose of putting a treadmill motor onto a lathe or mill or other shop tool, I stand by what I said. You have to calculate the torque. You have to get a bigger motor that is going to work better. You will be so much happier with it. So then the last question you may be thinking is then, well, this is just a piece of junk. What can I do with this? Well, this is a fantastic candidate for something like a drill press. Why? Because I can gear this to produce similar torque numbers to this. It's a whole lot smaller. It's going to be easier to mount to a drill press. And for a drill press, it's not going to be running continuously. If I'm making something on the lathe, I might put two hours on the motor. Now there are moments where it stops in between for setups and things like that, but the majority, at least 75% of the time that I'm working, the motor is turning. On a drill press, we turn it on, we punch a hole, we turn it off. We get another piece of metal in there, we turn it on, we punch a hole, we turn it off. Then we go somewhere else in the shop and do something else. The motors on drill presses don't see the kind of continuous use that a lather mill will. Now, I'm sure there are situations where a person is making a whole bunch of the same thing and they've got their drill press on and it's running for half an hour. They're just punching one hole right after another in multiple pieces. But that is not the normal situation. That is the exception to the rule. If that's how you use your drill press, you probably don't want to put a motor like this on it. You probably want to put something, well, I would say halfway between the two. But for someone who is just using their drill press intermittently, like most of us do, 
this is a great candidate for that. And in an upcoming video, I am going to do just that. I am going to put this on my drill press so that my drill press has variable speed. I'm going to gear it fairly significantly so that this is turning at a pretty good RPM when the drill press is going fairly slow. And ultimately, it should be a good upgrade. If you have any questions on anything that I've said here, please comment. If you disagree with what I've said here, please comment. Had people not told me I was wrong, this video wouldn't have happened. I am more than happy to address questions, concerns, and hey, there's always the possibility that I would be wrong. I'm not an expert. I'm just a hobbyist who has a fair amount of knowledge when it comes to treadmill components. I'm always trying to learn and I'm always trying to hone my craft. So if there's something about this you don't like, feel free. Put a comment down below and we can discuss it further. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.